All right, well, I think we can get this started. Uh, welcome to automate yourself out of a job or try or die trying. Why you should be trying to automate all of the things. A little bit about me. Um, I'm not really a fan of public speaking, but I think you should get out of your comfort zone every now and then to expand your horizons and everything. And the same goes with like writing code and you know everything. You need to continue progressing with learning new things. Um, I've been writing Python code for the last 10 years. I've uh, been dealing with Linux um, since uh, about 2002, 2003, um, and I'm a ham radio operator. So why would you want to do automation for your job? Well, it removes the repetitive tasks that you don't want to do every day. It keeps you from having to do all the stuff that a computer can do. Um, you want to let the computers do the jobs that they're good at. Um, it also standardizes the way each task is done so that you know that it's done the same way every time. And then it also ensures that it's done on time. Uh, so, for example, if you have a report that is due every day at a certain time, you can create that and in an automated fashion and allow it to get sent on its own and you don't have to worry about it, just out of sight, out of mind, until someone complains about it. <laughs> and they will. Um, it also frees up your time. And this is important because your time is money. It allows you to get to bigger and better things so that you can automate even better uh, tasks to get further down that line. Um, let's see. Computers, they don't sleep. So they can do anything that you need them to on the schedule and even notify you when they have an issue. So why make that a personal task? Why not have the computer do that so that you can go and do other things? It also saves a little bit of money. We can all agree that companies like to save money. Um, if one person spends, or if one person gets paid $50 an hour to go through a Excel spreadsheet, for example, and pick out the same stuff every time to put it in a report, or if you get paid X amount of dollars to go look at servers to make sure that the log files aren't filling up or anything like that. That's money that is being wasted. It's You can let the computer do that. They can do it faster and cheaper than a human can. So a little bit of a story here. Um, I was on night shift a long time ago and essentially doing all of that. I was you know, watching servers, babysitting them, making sure that they were running. And um, that was my job, just sit there and watch, see if the logs were filling up, make sure the website was working and everything. And I got bored really, really quickly. Um, I went through and watched entire series of Netflix uh, and, and on Hulu because I had to find a way to stay awake. Um, 
So eventually I got bored enough to start digging into uh, Python. This was Python 2.7 uh, because it was on one of the servers and I was like, okay, there's something that's on the server that I can use to make these checks a little bit better and everything. Um, I turned what happened to be an hour or two long check of all the servers that we had into a five minute click on this page. All this stuff is displayed. You go through and see if there's any green, if everything's green or if there was any red notifications or anything like that. And that allowed me to walk in, log in, get a, or go to that page, and within five minutes I knew everything, what was going on. I didn't even have to talk to the person that I was relieving because it's all right there. So they, as soon as I walked in, they got up and left because their day was done and I did my checks. Um, that morphed into my bosses wanting to uh, run queries on uh, databases and everything to make sure that uh, everything was good in there. And uh, it actually saved my boss quite a bit of time running reports for his, uh, his boss. So just a little example of why automation is kind of important especially since it's 2022. We have computers, we have the technology, why not use it? So first things first, you want, when you're automating, you wanna keep it simple because you don't know how long it's going to be before you have to come back to maintain it because it will break. Um, if you use a language that you already know, it'll be easier for you to get back to it when, you actually, when it does actually break. And it allows you to fix it faster so you can get back to doing the more important stuff. Um, so, for example, cron jobs. I wrote, I wrote a lot of Python code and used cron to schedule when those would uh, run to update the web page for uh, for my status. Um, Python was simple for me to learn, so I used that. Um, and then any system that's available to you is something that you should use. If you already have something that is in place that's not being used, but it can be, you should do that because it makes it simpler and easier to maintain. If you can keep it to one short script, it would be better. Um, some of my more, or more used um, automations are like three lines in Python code. And it makes it so that it's really simple to just go, okay, which line failed? All right, that one, it's, let me fix that. That way, you know, again, you can get back to doing the more important things. Um, and so like a one-line script, to start a task, such as rsync backup or anything like that, is way easier to troubleshoot than a hundred or a thousand line Python code or C code or anything else. Um, simply because it's all just right there. It's simple and you can you know, get to it quickly and fix the issue. Reuse code where possible. So some of my more complex 
automations have functions built into them. And this is because I try to re not rewrite the code that I've already written to do specific tasks. And that includes if you have to copy and paste it anywhere in your code. Um, and that makes, it not only makes it easier for you to troubleshoot, but your future self will thank you. Um, so examples would be like if you are connecting to a database. Well, that connection and everything can be reused multiple times in the same script depending on what you're doing. So you want to be able to use that same code in the same place or just by calling a function. It also helps making new automations faster. So you don't have to rewrite what you've already written. You can just call it in to your script. On that note, there's often no need for object-oriented programming. Um, classes are great, but it's easier if you don't have to deal with calling or building the object and everything like that. When you can just get down to doing the stuff that you need to in a short script, that's way faster in just code and uh, way faster for it to run. Classes are unnecessary weight and a f a fraction of a second per computer, if you're checking multiple computers, can add up to you know, seconds, minutes, hours, depending on how many computers you're checking and what you're doing. So you want to keep that as simple and fast as possible. Move most of your functions off onto a different file. That way you can have that file in the same folder as your other scripts that they're running from and you can just call or import it into your other scripts rather than having to copy paste or anything like that. You want to clear all of that clutter out of your code and put it somewhere else so that it's easier to troubleshoot later. It also increases the portability, so if you have to use it from, or move it from one network to another or from one entirely stood up system to like in AWS to like Azure, you can move it over there and change fewer things. So not too long ago, um, I had to manage hundreds of desktop workstations that the customer would keep data on. I know that you should keep all your data on networked uh, drives and everything, but for what they were doing, uh, the network latency wasn't uh, feasible for them to do the work, the work they needed. So they had it all local. Um, we had to schedule the time to do backups and system upgrades and the backups would often fail and that would end up with loss of data because the way it was set up, the, the upgrades would continue whether the backups failed or not. So I had to build a simple Python script that would actually go out and make sure that um, the backup happened, or if it and if it didn't, it would retry it, and then if it failed again, then it would actually flag that in the backup software to uh, not for the update software to not update until we could go in and look at it, and then it would send out an email to us. This saved at least a hundred different uh, counts of basically losing data. 
and uh, to my knowledge, it's still in use. So, talk a little bit about cloud automation. There's a lot of um, services that you can use in each cloud provider. Each one of them is different, of course. Um, I mainly use AWS. Um, but the whole idea of uh, cloud automation is you let the system, the, you let the cloud watch the cloud. So if there's an error in it, I'll use AWS CloudWatch as an example. CloudWatch can pick up on, uh, say, a drive space filling up. You can set it to watch drive spaces on instances, even local machines. And it will send a message to you before it gets to a certain percentage. And that's just a couple clicks. That type of automation you need to be doing. Even local, there's still platforms to use that you can do that kind of thing, and it makes it so much simpler for you to continue about your day. You don't have to watch, or you don't have to worry about uh, drive space filling up or CPU load or anything like that because there's something watching it for you. Infrastructure as code is a whole thing. Um, we all know about it. Uh, and there's, I'll have a little bit more on this later. Serverless code, such as AWS Lambda, um, that's where I do most of my work. And that I've enabled things such as automated shutdowns of um, test instances to save money. And boy, does it save money. Especially when you have like a R5 2XL going and it's like thousands of dollars an hour. Um, you set up a pipeline for um, your serverless code so that you can run tests on that before you deploy it because it can and will break things easily. Uh, ask me if, or how I know. Um, and it can also help you track billing through tags and stuff like that. Uh, use the tools available. If there are tools already available for monitoring and automating tasks, then use those. Um, Chef is a good uh, possibility, but there's things like Service Plus or Service Now can actually get into um, monitoring machines for you. And uh, there's plugins for things that you might already have, or you might already have those plugins, you just aren't using them. If you have any of them, use them because less work is more time for you. It also means that you don't have to build an entire system from scratch to monitor your uh, servers and everything. So systems go down, network connections drop, servers get hung. Oftentimes companies already have systems to monitor things like that. Sometimes they don't have it set up. Uh, we had a website that uh, basically went down hard one night. I happened to be the on-call guy, and uh, they called me, but couldn't really describe what it, you know, what error they had or anything like that. All they knew that was the website was down. There's an entire YouTube video on that that kind of makes a joke. We've probably all seen it. You know, the system is down. Um, so they go in and say, the last time this happened, X you know, was the solution or everything like that. And we all know 
that doesn't necessarily you know, that's not necessarily the same answer every time so it while it might be the same thing a few times in a row it doesn't necessarily mean that each time is that each time you have that issue it's that same thing that you have to do so you have to go in and log in and everything and make you know, look at all the stuff like logs to see what's going on and if there's any services and or that are halted and everything it took me you know probably three or four hours to actually figure out what was going on. Um, and what actually happened was there was an automated Windows update, all been there, um, that basically broke our services. Uh, I had to uninstall the Windows update to get everything back up and running. Um, so the next day, I spent a little bit of time and wrote some code to run in the Windows task scheduler that would check to see if that service was running. And if it wasn't, it automatically tried to restart it. If it failed then, it would send out an email to everybody that needed to know. So essentially problem solved because we would get an email before they would even know that the server was down. So, logging is your best friend. I can't stress this enough. If you're creating custom scripts that people in your, where you work might not know anything about, they may not even know how to code, you need logging and you need to make it good because when you have logging in place, you can point them to the log directory and set it up, you know, just have them go through and say if there's any errors or anything like that and then you can know right off the bat where it's at. You don't want to be searching through the code to figure out why it threw this one error. You want to you know, be able to go, oh, it's right there. Let me fix that. It also helps your future maintainers. If anybody comes behind you and uh, has to maintain your code, and it will happen, we all move to different positions and everything like that, and you know, somebody has to maintain the code that you wrote that's still in use, because you know, I have code where I work that is in use, it has been in use for the last 10 years, and people plagiarize my code all the time, so I get emails saying, hey, how does this work? Um, It'll help them figure out how it actually works and the expected output of your code so that they can have an easier time maintaining it instead of just having a bunch of um, text on a screen and staring at it. So an example of when logging saved me, uh, I had a large script that I mentioned earlier about starting and stopping the test and dev machines on a schedule. Initially, it had the bare minimum uh, logging. You're basically, hey, I'm running, and hey, I finished. Um, and it was just print statements. Uh, one day, it broke, expected. All the customers that were using it were emailing me, like hundreds of emails in you know, a couple hours. And my bosses got involved and it was a whole big thing because we can't get our, um, why did we have to start our dev instances? They should have already been up. Um, well, 
luckily, I had recently gone back through and actually added a bunch of logging lines to see where everything uh, was going through. I was in the process of refactoring all of my scripts so that they run a little bit better and shorter code and everything. And it took me about five minutes after walking in and checking all my emails to go in and look and see, oh, it's right there. It didn't start because it's on the wrong time. Okay. So I had you know, five minutes to fix that as opposed to going through rerunning it and trying to look at the output of what of the script and everything so like i said i'd get back to infrastructure as a code i'm sure you've heard the term cattle not pets um or snowflakes it being you have this one instance of this piece of software that is completely on its own. There's no, there's nothing like it. Um, if you're dealing with virtual machines and containers or anything in the cloud, you need to be doing everything you can to not have snowflakes, not have pets, because it makes it easier for you to get back online. So when you use infrastructure as code, you can set up things to let the computers build stuff for themselves. Um, I mentioned earlier that I have, to one of you, that I have a script that automatically joins a Red Hat instance to a Windows domain. That saves time. It saves money because you don't have to be in there man you're manually hand jamming all the commands to get in to get it joined to the domain. Um, it also allows you to join the domain in the same fashion so that you know that it works and it causes less errors in the deployment. Um, in fact all of my Lambda code is deployed via infrastructure as code. It gets deployed from a CloudFormation script that pulls from an S3 bucket where my uh, CI CD pipeline dumps it when it's done being tested. As soon as I make a change, throw it up into Git, and if everything's good, it dumps it into an S3 bucket. So what happens when things break if you use infrastructure as code? Well, if, it, um, if something breaks, say you have a container that failed, you can redeploy the container. You're up like that. Not a big deal. You stop caring about troubleshooting. If you have an EC2 instance that's misbehaving, you terminate it and let it rebuild. You can also scale as needed, and you can automate the scaling. You don't have, you have CloudWatch, for instance. Watch your CPU, and as it climbs, you can set it to get to a specific, once it gets to a specific usage, spin up another instance. You don't even have to touch it. It does that automatically. So home automation, yes, it's important. Lighting, like in here, you walk into a room, it takes half a second to turn on the light. But why would you want to turn on a light when you could have a computer do it for you? You just walk in and the light comes on. You walk out and the light goes off. It saves you money.
tasks on your home computer and your work computer for that or for that matter if you find yourself opening a browser as soon as you log into your computer why not just have that in the startup script or your login script because if you're doing it all the time let the computer start it for you so you just log in stop worrying about having to do all those clicks and everything have your backups on a schedule so that you don't have to worry about oh my hard drive died is everything backed up well yeah it's in the cloud or wherever you decided to back up I prefer a local NAS but that's me and then you can have some fun with your computer like on the terminal you can have it auto display some text um, like Calse or something like that to just brighten your day a little bit environmental controls corporations do it they keep their uh, systems on during the day when people are there and they turn them off at night for AC it saves them money why not do it at home so the important thing is you want to save any amount of time that you can so that you can get stuff done faster and work on the more important things and um, if you have to worry about you know if this server is running and everything you it's you you have more important things to do you need to be automating that so the funny thing is I automate everything that I can for a living. I'm still employed. It'll never go away. You can automate everything and you'll have more things to automate. Any questions? Um, so the way I do a lot of that uh, in the cloud is I have a my credentials in um, Secrets Manager, and it can just pull from that, and you can do a lot of your stuff in databases for your configurations and stuff like that. But you want to keep those in separate files from your uh, code so that you can back that up and then your code can live somewhere else anything else all right well i guess i can call it then <laughs>